Hi guys, this is Rocky Ellinger from the Center for Design and Instruction at HAP, Central Pennsylvania's Community College. Today we're looking at how to break down a learning outcome. While we break down this learning outcome, we have to think about putting together everything we've learned so far, including the principles of backward design, Bloom's taxonomy, and the ABCD format for objectives. You're going to start out by getting your Form 335. If you're not sure how to get that, reach out to your discipline lead. We're going to skim down that 335 to the section labeled Learning Outcomes. I just pulled an example one for English 101 and you can see that there are six learning outcomes here and they're fairly broad. So because they're fairly broad, we're going to have to go through a process of breaking down these learning outcomes into measurable objectives. Step one, choose one of your course's learning outcomes. In my case, I'm going to choose a learning outcome for my blended training course. This outcome is select technologies that can support and enhance activities in a flipped course. Now that's not too broad, but it is not easy to measure as it currently is stated. So I do need to divvy it up a little bit. Step two, list the key concepts and or skills required to achieve that outcome. When I look at my outcome and I think about what's involved, I think, all right, they first need to know about the technologies that can support and enhance before they even talk about selecting which ones. So I know concept, one of them is going to be Web 2.0 tools. Another concept is going to be Google Apps. And another concept will be multimedia. This is a good kind of overview of technologies that can support and enhance activities in a flipped course. Now, the other part of this, though, is being able to select the ones that support and enhance those activities. So this one's going to be a skill, and it's choosing the right technology for an instructional need. Step number three, write a measurable learning objective for each concept and or skill. So that means since I had four, I'm going to end up with four learning objectives for this one learning outcome. I'll start with the first one. Things I'm keeping in mind are my Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid on the left, and also my ABCD format for objectives. So my first concept is Web 2.0 tools. If I look at the A for audience, that's kind of a gimme. I know that my audience is always going to be my students. Now I've got to think about the behavior. This is the most important part, probably, of a learning objective. What is it that I want students to be able to do? and it has to be an action that I can measure in some way. So I'm going to take a look at this resource. It doesn't have everything, but it's a great starting point to get some ideas. Now you'll see this is based off of Bloom's original taxonomy. His revised taxonomy is a little bit different so that the top level could be creation. So the idea is that they can know something, understand something, apply something, analyze something, evaluate something and create something. Synthesis kind of gets wrapped up into analysis and evaluation in that revised taxonomy. But we still get the idea. <clears throat> now, I know that I want students to understand what Web 2.0 tools are. So that's kind of in between knowledge and comprehension. I'm going to lean toward comprehension because I really want to make sure that they understand you know, what that is. So I'm going to look at these possible help tools here in comprehension. We see we've got translate, restate, discuss, describe, recognize, explain, express, identify. Now, that doesn't mean that you're limited to only these words. You can find something different, but this can help you brainstorm. I like the idea of them describing what those Web 2.0 tools do and how they can enhance learning. So I think I'm going to use describe for my action. So now I have students will describe how a Web 2.0 tool can enhance student learning. Now, I'm not done. That's just A and B. C is the condition. So what essentially is the, the, the environment or the circumstances that students are going to have to do this action? And I think I want to put it actually in as like a long answer in a quiz or something so that I know that they're writing it, they understand it, and they couldn't have copy and pasted everything from online because they need to be able to do it fairly quickly. Now I'm ready to talk about the degree. What level of mastery do I want for this? As I can see, I already did have the word timed in my condition in a timed online quiz. That actually does imply a level of degree. They need to be able to do it under a time constraint. But I'm also going to add that I want it to be accurately. So I want to make sure that there are no errors in their understanding of what the Web 2.0 tool can do or can't do. 
So I have a combination of accurately and timed to be able to show my degree. Now I'm at a little bit of an advantage with this learning outcome because my first three concepts really are the same format and I can really answer them in the same way. Since they're related, I think I'll put them all in that timed online quiz and I'll be able to tell that they can describe each of these. That will show that they've met that understanding level of Bloom's taxonomy. Now I have to look at the skill that I identified as being required for that learning outcome. This skill I sort of described as choosing the right technology for an instructional need. So this is not necessarily a fact they need to know or memorize or anything. I want them to be able to use what they've learned to be able to choose the right technology for a situation. I already know my audience is going to be students. Again, that audience is pretty much the gimme every time. But when it comes to behavior, that's going to be a little bit more intense. When I think about that Bloom's taxonomy, I want them to apply what they know about these different technologies in order to choose the appropriate one for their instructional needs, which also involves analyzing and evaluating those technologies. This often happens. You might have an objective or a skill or a concept that ends up hitting more than one level. But this also means that my sheet of handy little clue words might not be my best resource. I'm going to have to think a little bit outside of the box. I end up coming to the decision that it should be students will describe how they selected a technology tool to meet an instructional need. Essentially, they're going to be describing that choice process of being able to select the appropriate technology for an instructional need, a circumstance, or a situation. This will help ensure that I can measure that they understand how to apply, analyze, evaluate to the extent that they can select the right technology tool. So now I have to consider the condition. What are the circumstances or the context that students are going to be performing this behavior? So when I look at the fact that they're going to be choosing the right technology for an instructional need, and I've already established that they're going to be describing their, their rationale, their thought process, I feel like that would actually be a great example of something that could go into an online discussion. That way they can get feedback from others, they can share their thought process with their peers and also see how it compares to their peers. Maybe they had a different rationale that could be beneficial. I like the idea of it being a little less formal than say an essay exam or a paper that they have to write. Now it's time to think about the degree. Again, this is not the easiest section. Actually, degree is my least favorite part of the ABCD objective. It's important, but it can be really hard to do when you're not doing something simple like being able to perform a multiplication problem. Uh, when you're doing things that are a little more abstract or complex or just you know less uh, accuracy based, that it can be tricky to decide on a degree. In this case, I'm going to say that it needs to be in at least two full paragraphs. So I feel like this being able to write about it to this extent of two full paragraphs is the degree I want to see. I don't want to see just a sentence where they said, yeah, I chose this because I think it's really fun. I want them to be able to go into more detail. So that's going to be how I want them to demonstrate their mastery. Ta-da! I've broken down my learning outcome from my 335. You'll see this in the format of your outcome breakdown. I've got the learning outcome from the 335 on the far left. And then in the middle, I have my concepts and skills. And then on the right, I have my finished learning objectives. Now it's your turn. Choose a learning outcome from your 335. Pick one that's a higher level of thinking. If you pick something really low level, that's not going to be the best opportunity for you to work on it in class and work with others. Choose something that's got some meat to it, so that way you really get to explore how to use Bloom's taxonomy and the ABCD format for objectives. Don't forget, you can always reach out to any member of the CDI team. We'll be happy to help you out with breaking down those outcomes. See you next time.